What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. Uh, this is a brand that we have not looked at yet technically. Uh, this is the CJRB Crag, C-R-A-G. I'll have a link in the description of some sort if you uh, want to purchase this knife after the review. Um, CJRB is a, uh, a company that is affiliated with Artisan Cutlery. It's almost like, I mean, Artisan Cutlery has a uh, premium line and then they have a budget line and then they have this secondary budget group known as CJRB which I would imagine if it does well will evolve into its own thing and there'll be a premium CJRB line. I mean I, you know these the Chinese companies that are figuring out how to do these budget knives seem to all have kind of the same business model you know um, and that's that's kind of what this is. Um, I know that uh, I've seen these knives on uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works before. I think um, uh, there's a few other places online. Um, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about this knife here. So this knife was actually provided uh, by the Pass Around Group, which means by extension it came from CJRB, the manufacturers themselves. So I appreciate that. As usual, I'll try not to let that affect my review, but I don't get to keep the knife, so it should be pretty easy. Let me go ahead and give you guys an overall measurement of this knife. Uh, from tip to scale, you're looking at about eight and a quarter inches. That's about right where I like it. Maybe just shy of eight and a quarter inches. That's about my sweet spot. From tip to scale, you're looking at about three and a half inches. The actual cutting edge, given the fact that we have a, a, a finger choil there, comes in at about three and a quarter. That's pretty much exactly the same, uh, those are the, almost exactly the same measurements as the Hinder XM18. Um, I really like those measurements. That seems to fit my hand well, and I think it's a sweet spot for a lot of people that like to carry a larger or medium-large style knife. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. I was right away attracted to that when I read the specs, so I was really excited uh, to get my hands on this. I was also excited to get my hands on it because of the blade shape. I've been kind of waiting for a company to get this blade shape exactly right for EDC, and we'll talk about what they did right with this one. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons here. So up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. You can see there's just a little shorter than the Rat 1. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? PM2 coming in at about 8.3 inches overall, so very close in overall length to the PM2. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at eight inches overall. You can see there the Ritter Hogue, the camera angle, my camera angle is almost perfectly right above it, but um, because of the blade shape and the position of the knives, they're looking the same, but the CJ, uh, CJRB Crag is actually just a quarter inch longer there. And last but not least, the Spyderco, Para 3, Para 3 coming in at 7 and a quarter. Um, the other interesting thing is despite this blade shape, um, its carry profile is very similar. I mean, in terms of blade thickness and handle thickness, it's very, very similar to the PM2. In fact, I want to say the blade stock thickness is probably somewhere between 135 and 145 thousandths. Let's go ahead and measure that here real quick. Well, it says 120 thousandths, but I'm going to guess that that's wrong. It might, it might not be, but this is, these are not the most reliable calipers in the world. Let's try again. Yeah, I'm going to say it's probably about 130 thousandths because it looks fairly close to the PM2. The scales are about the same thickness, and even when closed, you can see the height, you know, making room on the PM2 for that thumb hole. The um, height on this guy down here is much taller. But, I mean, the carry profile between these two, you're looking at at maximum height from the back. Down here, we're looking at one and three, nah, like 1.65 inches, about one and a half inches here. We're looking at only about one and a quarter inches down here, but we're looking at, again, about 1.6, 1.7 inches right here. So in terms of maximum height and width, and dimensions all the way around, I would say this knife is probably no more difficult to carry than the PM2. Where it does differ is actually in weight. Uh, now this guy is G10 running on uh, uh, bearings. I don't know why I said that. But it's got full unmilled steel liners. So the weight, while not incredibly heavy, is still pretty heavy. 5.47 ounces, that's a little heavier than what the standard version of the XM18 weighs, about five and a quarter. So this is gonna be a little bit heavier than some people care to carry. 
my opinion, of course, is that um, within a, uh, my, my uh, preferred uh, carry range is anywhere from four and a half to six and a half ounces. I don't care so much about the weight as I do the carry profile. So for me, this is completely fine. I have no issues with this whatsoever. Let's talk about the anatomy here. What we have is a, a beautifully tumbled D2 cleaver style blade with some belly. Now I love this blade, uh, the blade shape for how it looks. It's a very, very nice looking blade. They did a great job with it. Um, comes nice and thin down to the edge. Really, really great. Um, I love the look of it. I don't do a lot of puncture tasks um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Excuse me, real quick, I'm gonna put my phone on airplane mode. I always seem to forget to do that. Sorry if it's shaking around a little bit. Um, but uh, I don't do a lot of puncture tasks day to day. A tip like this is just fine for me in terms of getting into packages and making cuts. But if I, uh, a situation ever comes for me where I have to, this is my regular EDC blade right now. This is the Para 3 Maximum. Maximum is plenty tough, but if I have to stick that tip into something and do some prying, I don't plan on it. But a lot of times there's a lot of things that I run into every day that I don't plan on doing. I would much rather pry with a blade like this if I had to than a blade like this. You come really, really thin down here. And while this one still gets thin, there's a lot more material vertically and there's a lot more of a dramatic drop to the tip, which means it's a lot stronger because it's not really a tip. For those of you who need a tip for puncture tasks in your day-to-day -day, you know, EDC life, this may not be the blade style for you, but this is great for me. The blade's gonna be plenty slicey. You can see there, the, there is a flat and it extends about 80% the length of the blade, which means the thickness is running out you know, pretty much almost all the way to here. Uh, there's a nice little swedge up top giving it some character and then all this room to drop down to the cutting edge. Um, it really does get fairly thin, not ultra, ultra thin, but still plenty enough to be uh, mega slicey and just be a great all around user. There's no thumb stud, so there's nothing to get in, way of, uh, get in the way of the cutting path. We do have nicely chamfered uh, G10 scales. Those G10 scales probably could have been just a little bit thinner, just to make it a little bit easier. You might, you, I don't know if you'd really shave down any meaningful weight, but the thickness of the knife, it's not overly, overly thick, but it's, it's fairly thick. They probably could have shaved that down a little bit. Not that big of a deal. Very comfortable though. Medium texture peel ply, not aggressive. This is not the type of texturing that's gonna tear up your pants, but it is still gonna provide um, medium traction. It's about perfect texturing. There is a choil here but you're only gonna really get just slightly behind, in my fingers, slightly behind the first knuckle. I like choils where I can do this. And here's the thing, I'd rather it either be a full choil that's gonna accommodate for most people's whole finger back up here behind the second knuckle so I can choke up on it like this, because this is how I like to make those big heavy cuts into really thick cardboard. You know, I like to choke up right behind the blade so I can really put that pressure behind the cut. Um, just, just go, I mean, just another, you know, like quarter of an inch or not even that, just to accommodate my full finger or don't do it at all. Make it a sharpening choil or make it a full finger choil. This is not enough of a choil. I'd rather it be just a little bit bigger. Um, it's, it's not the biggest bummer in the world and it's not a deal breaker. It's just kind of obnoxious. You have a simple Torx head pivot here. That's great. You have an orange pivot color. Um, I know that there are different colors available. There's black and there's kind of a bluish gray color. I think they all have that orange pivot color. I don't know what Artisan Cutlery's deal is with the orange pivot color. I think in some cases on some of their premium lines, it's a different color. It's like blue or maybe gold or I don't know. The orange is weird to me. It may not be weird to some people, but I, I imagine it's aluminum or if it's not, if it's just painted steel, let's do some other colors maybe. Um, I'd almost like to see just satin, you know, um, some blues, some, some uh, greens, some reds. I mean, if you're able to do that, something else besides orange. I'm not sure why all of these are orange. Again, not a deal breaker, it's just my, if you like orange, it's not gonna bother you, but if you're not really an orange person um, or you just like other colors, you know, that's gonna kind of look a little bit weird. Again, not a deal breaker. Little teeny tiny T6 screws. Ugh, I hate those. It is what it is. Uh, I feel like we should universally move to um, T8 on the handle screws, but you know, what can you do? We have a couple of, oh, we have a, we do have a uh, lanyard hole back here that you'll be able to fit some 550 through nicely. We have the steel liners. They are nice and flush, very good fit and finish and fitment on the G10 scales on the uh, uh, steel liners all the way around. So that's great. By the way, um, this area back here is not shouldered. I would have preferred to see that shouldered. In fact, I'd like to see that um, on pretty much all knives uh, that ju are just utilizing a stop pin. But again, that's not really that big of a deal. I just forgot to talk about it. Couple of little standoffs back here, that's just fine. I love it when it's just two screws and two standoffs, less parts, that's great, no issue. You have a deep carry pocket clip that's 
it's an okay design. I kind of prefer more of a dip, like the MSG deep carry clip, and not so much of a prominent bill. There's less room for this pocket clip to get caught on. There's more room for this pocket clip to get caught. And given that this is a Chinese knife, you break that clip, the clip is specific to the knife, it's probably gonna be kind of a pain in the butt to get another clip, but you know, what can you do? Um, Really, there's not that much of a problem with the design of the clip. It's more so the fact that they decided to use two vertical screws and not mill a pocket into the scale. And believe me, I have tightened these screws down all the way, and I still have play on that pocket clip. If you're going to do two vertical screws, you have to do... Uh, you have to mill this in so the pocket clip is nested into the scale and then the scale is stabilizing the clip. Um, I also imagine that the holes that, the, that are in the pocket clip to accept the screws, not the threads that go into the scale and, and frame, the holes in the pocket clip have too much of a gap around where the threads of the screw actually fit through. So it's allowing for this play. Again, it's not a deal breaker to have play in the clip because the, the clip will still do its job. It's just going to move around a little bit and you're going to have to check it every now and then. Um, but uh, it's obnoxious. For a design of clip that is more likely uh, to break off than in some of the better designs that are out there and it's, and it's specific to this knife, and you know, that's something that I really just don't like. Um, mill the pockets into the scales on both sides. This one does accommodate for a left-handed carry position, though it is a right-hand liner lock. Um, let's just mill those pockets in. Artisan Cutlery has done that before. I'm not sure why CJRB decided not to do it on this knife, but that's just, that's helpful. People don't like to have play in their clips. Um, this is a liner lock. It locks up absolutely solid. That's very, very satisfying. No blade play up, down, left, or right. It has nearly a fall shut action. We didn't talk about deployment, did we? Well, did, did we? Did we? We didn't talk about deployment, did we? We did not talk about deployment, did we, is what I was trying to say. Nice wiggle shut action, which is fully acceptable on this price range of knife. Very snappy, awesome detent, very, very satisfying all the way around. I mean, these companies have this figured out now. This is, they've got this figured out. Flipping action is not a problem. Very satisfying, runs on bearings, does exactly what you want it to do. No double clutch, it falls past the detent ball. It's just perfect, love that. So to recap, the things that I don't like, Wish it had a full finger choil, this kind of halvesy thing where they're not sure if they want more choil or more blade. Let's just do one or the other. I'd like some other colors for the, um, uh, the pivot color there. Let's move up to T8 because those suck. Um, and then let's mill a pocket for the, um, the pocket clip because that thing uh, wiggles around a little bit. Um, and then also, truthfully, um, I don't care, but most people are going to. Uh, some milling on the inside of the liners will drop the weight on this guy by about maybe half an ounce. You might be able to get into the high fours if you do some pretty serious milling. Um, the liners are still going to be plenty durable, um, and the G10 scales are still going to be plenty durable. You know, if you can get this to about a 4.5 to 4.75 ounce knife, I think it's going to be really acceptable. Truthfully, though, guys, the best thing about this knife is that when I looked it up on uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was either Smoky Mountain Knife Works or White Mountain Knives. Either way. Um, on either on one of those retailers, not I'll link it below. It was thirty-five dollars, thirty-five bucks for bearings, D2, an awesome blade shape, awesome build quality, and only a few little nitpicky flaws. Yeah, I can recommend this knife at thirteen minutes and twenty-eight seconds, which is pretty fast for me. I can tell you guys right now, it's a recommendable knife. I'd like to also say this: um, I've been kind of waiting for a company to get this blade shape done exactly right. Um, other than the um, the choil here, I think this blade shape uh, and length and this whole size of knife and the setup, I think you guys nailed it. CJRB nailed this blade shape. This blade at 35 bucks is gonna serve anybody who purchases it plenty well, um, as long as you're not doing things you shouldn't be doing with a knife. Oh, by the way, the other thing that I was gonna nitpick, um, sh shoulder this, that's the only other little suggestion I was gonna make. And I don't always make that suggestion on every knife that could use that, I'm just pointing that out. Um, because they, like a lot of these other uh, uh, Chinese companies, are, are, they're set up, they're clearly capable of making an, uh, you know, a high quality product. Just improving on those little teeny tiny things um, will help yield a, a perfect knife, you know, definitely. But this is definitely well worth the money. The fact that you can get it in orange or dark, or I'm sorry, uh, black or dark gray, I would choke down that orange pivot color with a black scale or a dark gray scale. OD green's not really my thing, but this is an awesome knife. It looks good, and you know what else I really like? Let me take a look here. Besides, like this looks fine. 
their their font is still kind of boring. There's still a serial number on there, and it still says China, but there's just less going on. Um, I'm gonna say the same thing. You know, we don't need serial numbers on there, and we don't need China on the blade. We we know. You know, if we're buying this knife, we know it's made in China. Get rid of that. You know, those little nitpicks are really all I have. But th this is definitely still a very very recommendable knife outside of those features. Um, thanks again to the Passeron Group for allowing me to be a part of that and take a look at this knife. And thanks for C, uh, to CJRB for uh, sending it to us and allowing us to take a look. I think that's about it, guys. I think that's about all I can say. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it uh, entertaining or informative in any way, shape, or form, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, click on this metal complex logo right here and subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.